Hello and welcome to CS264. This is lecture six and this is lesson five. In this short lesson, we're going to continue our overview of OOP fundamentals and we're going to look at abstraction. And we're going to look at examples of how to implement abstraction using C-sharp. Okay. Abstraction, it's one of the key concepts of OOP. And the purpose of abstraction is to manage complexity by hiding details, perhaps unnecessary details, perhaps proprietary details. Um, those, that means that the member data, method implementations, you want to hide these from the users or objects uh, or other objects that use the class. Abstraction facilitates the implementation of extended, maybe more complex logic to provide an abstraction without having to understand or consider the hidden implementation or structure. In general, abstraction is the process of hiding the internal details of a class or application from the outer world users of that class, other objects that use those class. Abstraction can be used to create this boundary between the application and the client programs, exposing an interface and hiding the implementation details. And of course, this is almost always happens using access modifiers. So with abstraction, we typically only provide access to required methods and properties to the outside code. We can think about the classes implementing data abstraction where the object data is hidden from the outside and only available via methods or properties, in other words, specified with some interface, and process abstraction, where the internal implementation of the method functionality is hidden from the outside code. So two kinds of abstraction, data abstraction, process abstraction. So let's see what happens in C-sharp. So C-sharp, you know, we talk about abstract classes, and an abstract class is a class that contains at least one abstract method and an abstract method is a method which is declared using the abstract keyword and has an empty body. The actual definition of the method is realized in the subclasses, and the class itself is also declared then using abstract. An abstract class can contain any number of abstract and non-abstract methods, but it must contain at least one abstract method. Abstract methods are not implemented. They just declare method signatures, parameter lists, etc. Abstract classes cannot be instantiated. In other words, it's not possible to create instances or objects using the abstract class. You must subclass and then make objects using the derived um, subclasses. Assuming that the derived class is not also abstract, it's not some abstract hierarchy. You know, so, but yeah, at some point you have some concrete class that you're going to have to implement. It. A lot of error checking is related to abstraction, okay? And that all happens at compile time. So if you forget to implement the abstract, the, the, an abstract method in the subclass, forget to set up the object, the abstract hierarchy correctly and so forth, you know, the compiler will tell you about it. If you think about back to the last lesson, we talked about interfaces. So unlike interfaces, abstract classes may provide a partial implementation. They can include methods with full implementations and may also include defined member fields. This might help you with your design decisions, for example. You might say to yourself, so do I need to use um, an abstract class here, do I need to use an interface here? So, you know, you might need to have an abstract class and an interface, okay? But, you know, knowing what they each do and understanding the problem will help you with the designs. So let's have a, a simple example, C sharp. Actually, what I've done in this example here is I'm, again, I'm working with shapes and I'm trying to keep the same example right the way through the, um, through the lessons. Um, what I've done is I've included some of the typical features that are available in C-sharp, including abstract properties, accessing base class constructors, overloading constructors, have different protection levels and so forth. So while it's a very simple and short program, it does give you many of the features that relate to abstraction. So it doesn't do much in itself um, or do anything really complex, but it shows you how to do things okay, um, in a particular way. So what happens here is that the program defines this abstract shape class. That means we can't instantiate shapes and most subclasses. So we can not We can only instantiate derived classes like circles or rectangles, but we can't create shape objects, which you could do in the previous lesson. Okay. Um, so this includes defined data members that specify the shape location on the canvas and a, a single method called get coordinates. Okay. So that provides access to the shape location and that will be common to all shapes on the canvas. So I mean, if it's a circle, it will probably be the center point of the circle shape. If the, if it was a rectangle or a polygon, it would be some starting point, okay? It includes a single abstract method for calculating the area, 
and that needs to be defined in the derived class, which is unsurprising given what we said beforehand. Um, it's going to be a circuit class here. And it also includes an alternative way to calculate the shape area using an abstract property. Okay, so I like these. Okay, so let's jump into the code and have a look. Okay, and again, I should have an example for you. Class shape. I don't see it here. Ah, it's probably called my abstract. Wow, let's have a look and see that. Just check that this is the correct piece of code. No, that was one that I did previously. Okay, I'll make sure we have it for you anyway. Okay, okay. Um, so let's have a look at it here. Okay, so here I have this shape. So what I've done is I've created um, a shape anchor for X and Y. So I've created a protected property X and I'm um, I'm limiting the property further for the set. So the uh, mutator method is private. It can only be set by, by um, the, um, the shape class itself, protected Y, XY, and I've also a protected abstract double which is area it's an abstract an abstract method that we need to do which is exactly what we wanted this is a method that's fully implemented called get coordinates okay and I actually have this one here which is another way to get the area okay this is but it's a it's a property again and it's an abstract property so we'd have to implement that here's a constructor and here's another constructor okay so overload of constructors the full constructor and so forth. Okay, so I have a circle which extends shape, and this one has a radius. So you know, not all shapes have radiuses. So R is here, and it's got this property. It's get and set. I could have applied some level of of um, of access here if I wanted there in terms of the encapsulation. So I'm creating um, the circle. It extends. Ah, look, the circle. This circle calls the the base constructor as well. The base class constructor. Which is an XY and adds an R, a radius. And again, if we just specify create a circle with XY, this is XY and R, we call the base class to set the, the, the we call the base class to set the um, the X and Y position, and we just retain the radius here in this particular class. Here we have a, if we if we just create a circle with a radius, it uses the default base setting, which is this one up here. And then um, okay, that's okay. So we're overriding the double area, which is what we wanted expected to do. Okay, so and then we overrode the the property get area as well. So we told it what the get should be there. Uh, we have a method to, to convert it to a string, and we're creating some circles. So here's a circle at 120, 120, 50. Then we're looking at the details of the circle, and then we create another circle, and we're looking at the details center. So this time we're we're um calling the shape class method here as well because that was pop that, that was available okay so yeah so it's fairly straightforward now if I if I can find this and um, easily then I can run it for you maybe it's in a different window ah it's here Okay, and yeah, so let's have a look at this then. I'm going to get rid of them all actually, and I'm just going to, because I have too many open here. Let me stretch this. Okay. Let's make it visible. Oh, that was one I. Was what I use in class today, so it's not that one. Okay, let's see if I can find this. Uh, oh, maybe it's called my shapes. Is that it? Hmm, probably not. Anyway. I'll make it available for you. I won't spend too much longer doing this. But okay, but that's basically how it works.
Okay, so we have lots of ways, and I guess the key features are here we have ways of accessing the base class um, constructors, and we have we need to override the, the various methods, and we can have overriding properties as well. Okay, and then um, so that's a little bit of abstraction. Okay, thank you very much for watching. That's the end of um, this lesson, and um, that's the end of lecture six.